gift of life, that gift, second life, this like opportunity to still be here Mm -hmm. makes me, made me committed to like not settling and not, not just taking what was available and not staying in situations where I was unhappy or felt like it was no longer serving. That's an incredible experience to have, especially so young. Yeah. It, it Listen, it is not something that I would wish on my worst enemy. It's extremely frightening. It's extremely difficult. Um, there's something, you know, people talk about it with the pandemic. Right. But years before the pandemic, I had, you know, it's just, it's, it, it, you come face to face with your mortality. And I did that at 21. Right. Um, but I wouldn't take it back because it made me who I am. It made me not only driven, but it made me also appreciate like what matters when and where. Right. I put more emphasis on appreciation, gratitude, and being present than I do on necessarily being first, being the most popular or being seen all, you know, like, right, right. I want to succeed, but more than succeed, I want to be happy because I understand that like when I was sitting there, not knowing, you know, sick as a dog, not knowing if I was going to make it to the next day because I was in so much pain. I didn't care that I, you know, didn't have straight A's. I didn't, it didn't matter that none of that stuff mattered. What mattered was like, I wish I had spent more time with my friends. I wish that I had gone on spring break, like more than one spring break, instead of being like, oh, I just worked through it and and put it off until my senior year. And then I got sick and never experienced things like Mardi Gras. And even now, like, I love a good challenge, but I also have, before toxic work environment became like a familiar phrase, I was very clear about, I can't stay somewhere that I'm wake up every day unhappy. And it makes the, right. the, the thought of being there makes me unhappy. Even if it pays my bills, we'll just have to find another way. And I have been truly blessed that every time I've gotten to the point where I feel like, okay, I've learned what I need to hear and it's time to move on. It's time to grow. A, a door has opened. Right that in being intentional about putting my happiness first, a new door opens every time. And, you know, you could call it manifesting or you could just call it like, you can see it. You're, you're, right. you see it because you're, pre- you're prepared to see it because you're open to it. It will, yes. it will arrive. You right? notice the opportunities. Yeah, exactly. Versus if you're s- sitting in the midst of something and you're dwelling and you're just like, I don't know what I'm going to do. This is the only way. And if it's not this, then I have nothing. Then right. you, you really will have nothing. That's what I learned. Do I still wake up some days feeling overwhelmed? Do I still question my choices? Of course. There, I, I, every day is not a great day. Right. But that's my guiding principle. That's what I come back to. Though the people that see the world that way are the, those are the people that I choose to surround myself with and populate my life with because it's a choice for a really long time before it became a popular catchphrase I used to tell people all the time like choose happy Mm -hmm. like you have to it's and it's active it's just like love like it's a verb like happiness is in the action you have to actively make the decision I wake up every day and some days I'm sluggish, other days I'm okay, but every day I'm so glad that I'm here and not six feet under. Right. And every day I'm like, even if today's shit, it's a new opportunity to like start over. Like it's a new opportunity. There'll be an opportunity to do something differently today than yesterday. That's a really great um, way of looking at it. It's lit- the way the world has become so crazy. Yes. I honestly don't, I'm I'm amazed by people that operate any differently because I'm, I feel like if I didn't, I would spend so much time wallowing and I would spend so much time being sad because there is truly a lot to be sad about. Right. There's truly a lot going on in the world 
to be overwhelmed by. I never want to discredit people that are that struggle to make that choice or struggle to get up every because it's freaking hard. It yes. You know what I'm saying? I agree. You gotta show up. Yeah. And, and if some and if you have identified if you, once you know that this is not it, that doesn't mean like you walk away that minute. For me, it is once that bell goes off mm -hmm. the motion is okay this is my truth I honor it by finding another way I honor it by today being day one of doing looking finding identifying an open door to get out of here um I I can remember when I realized like I love magazines but what I love is telling stories and that the medium of print publishing wasn't vi wasn't as viable as when I had started years earlier mm -hmm. and that it was time for a change. And I just remember I'd get up every day and pray for an open door and pray for like, okay, God, like he here's what I want to do. And, and what I need is an open door and have conversations and being honest around that with right. people that... I thought could help and even people who just meant well because sometimes it's also having people that really believe in you and want great things for you praying for you or thinking good thoughts for you that changes your trajectory exactly because then they're also looking out for your opportunities too exactly so I assume that growing up you really enjoyed writing because you said you love the written word and you were going to become an English teacher well I, I love the written word, but I love to read. I grew up, uh, my mom was an avid reader mm -hmm. and they purposely bought a house that was within walking distance of a library ah. so that we never had the, like as kids, we didn't go home and watch TV. We would mm -hmm. go to the library and get books and come home and read. Like that's how it got done. So yeah. I love reading. I love story. And I think more so even than a writer, I'm a natural born editor. I love working with writers to bring great stories to life. So in that, in that role, so when you're working with a writer and say they're very passionate about what they're writing, is it difficult to get them to pare it down or to change things or to work it, with you in this process? You know, it depends on the writer. There are a lot of really great writers that once they trust you, mm -hmm. they they understand that you're not there to change their work. You're there to enhance it. That's the job of an editor. An editor's job is to elevate whatever they're working on to the next level, to sharpen it, to give it focus, to be that outside, that, that those fresh eyes and ears, those, those mm -hmm. fresh eyes and ears, I would say. So I prefer to work with writers that see it that way, as opposed to a personal affront that you want to make changes. Right. But for me, if something is so bad that it's a slash and burn, mm -hmm. I've always been the person that's like, I believe in radical honesty, in, in, in gentle radical honesty, I should say. I don't, I'm not.